Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. I hope you'll stick around, see who I'm going to be inspired by this week and find out how you can go to their channel and find out how I inspired them. Thanks so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here again. It is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, what I like to do is stop by almost every Saturday and team up with another crafty YouTuber and be inspired by each other. We each choose one project by the other crafter and we come and we make our own new project inspired by it. A couple fun things about this is of course being inspired by someone else and we don't know what the other person is going to be inspired by until the day of the collaboration. If you're a crafty YouTuber and this sounds like something you would like to try out with me, I will link the video below where I give all of the details. I do have a few more slots open through the end of 2020 and I would love to get those filled up. For today, I am teaming up with Mary Ellen of Creative Time with M.E. And she has a YouTube channel and an Instagram account, which I will link both of those below. Today, I will be taking inspiration from a card that she posted on Instagram. It is up on the screen here now. I loved those kind of splats of color and just how the sentiment just stood out there in the center. Now, I didn't see a video on her YouTube channel of how she made this card. Mary Ellen, when you're watching this, if you do have a video, feel free to link that in the comments and then I'll put it in my description box. But I have linked to the Instagram photo so you can go get more details on it. Don't forget, when you're done here, you're going to go visit Mary Ann's channel. I have her video for today linked at the top of the description box below, and you can see how I inspired her and what she has created. Before I start the process, I'm going to talk a little bit about the products that I'll be using today. If I add or change anything later, I will make sure to let you know. But if I leave you with any questions, as always, leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my stamp sets today, I'm going to be using Sweet and Sassy Stamps Grunge Elements 2. I bought this purposely just for that little paint splot there and this will be the first time that I'm using it so I'm super excited to ink this up. For my sentiment, I got out this Kelly Create set. I believe it is called New Bouncy Lettering. But if I find out different when I go to do my description box, I will find the correct name and link that below. I plan on right now using the Follow Your Heart sentiment right here. I will be stamping that and heat embossing it with Detail Silver Embossing Powder. And for my paint splats or paint splotches, I'm going to be using some Gina K Designs inks. I pulled out Wild Lilac, Blue Lagoon, and Passionate Pink. I'm also going to do a little embossing on the card front, so I got out this herringbone embossing folder from Joann's. Let's get crafty! I got started on today's card by doing the cutting. The first thing I did was cut a scrap of white cardstock to four and a half inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. Then I brought in a piece of gray cardstock because I thought this would go nicely with the silver embossing and I cut that so it was four and three quarters inches wide by three and a half inches tall, leaving an eighth of an inch border all the way around the white piece. Next, I brought in a pre-cut and scored card base and I will be running this through my cuddle bug in that herringbone embossing folder. What I do is try to line up the score line with the bottom of the embossing folder and then when I put it through my embossing machine or my cuddle bug, I'm going to make sure that I hold that tight and straight in that folder. That way it does emboss to the edge and it doesn't get crooked in there. 
I just love the way that embossing adds some texture to a so-called plain white card base. Once that was embossed, I went ahead and folded the card in half and I did bring in my new Arteza bone folder to just make that a nice crisp fold. Now it's time to do some stamping. I did go ahead and bring in my black Sizzix mat. Since this is a clear stamp and there's no rubber on the back, this mat gives the extra cushion you need to get a nice clean image. Now because I have discovered lately that the mat also works kind of like an ink pad, I'm going to put a scrap of white paper behind my piece of white cardstock so that any ink that goes off the edge of my piece of cardstock, it will just stamp right onto to that paper and I can go ahead and put it back in the recycle bin. For the stamping on this piece I want to create a colorful border with these ink splotches using the three colors I chose. The first thing I did was stamp the pink splot twice around the edge and then I made sure to clean that off well before I brought in the blue ink and stamped two of those as well. Once I had those two blue splotches, I cleaned my stamp once again, and then I brought in my final color, the purple. And I ended up stamping this three times around the outside edge, just kind of filling in some of those open areas. For the sentiment, I went ahead and brought in my Misty. This way, if I need to stamp it a couple times, I can do that and make sure the stamp goes exactly where I want it. I take off the sentiment that I'm going to use. Once again, it is follow your heart. And I play around with the layout a little bit and try to get it centered as best as I can on that white piece of cardstock. Once I have that in place, I use my embossing buddy on the cardstock so my embossing powder sticks to only where I want it. Then I ink up the stamp and stamp it. Now I did notice here that my magnet from the Misty must have kept the top of the stamp from stamping completely. So luckily I was using the Misty and I was able to ink that up once again and stamp it right in the exact spot I needed. Once I had that done, I brought in my silver embossing powder, added that to the sentiment, and then you'll see here my tidy tray allows me to just put that embossing powder right back into my jar for later. Once I heat set that powder on my sentiment, I realized that I wanted to bring in a little bit more of that silver shine. So I got out a peg stamp. This is from Stamps by Judith, and it just has some random dots on the end. I ink that up with Versamark again and heat emboss that with the Detail Silver Powder. And you'll notice that before I do each stamp, I go ahead and rub my embossing buddy on the cardstock where I'm going to stamp. This is especially important now because I am touching this piece of cardstock a lot with my fingers and I want to make sure that that powder doesn't stick there. I add the powder to all three spots where I put those dots and then I heat set that. I just love this little extra shine it gives the card. Now it's time to get this card put together. I start by matting my stamped piece with the gray cardstock and you might notice here that I put a little extra adhesive than I might normally and that's because with all of the embossing this piece of cardstock warped just a little bit so I want to make sure that it is going to lay nice and flat when I adhere it to my mat. I wanted to add a little dimension to my card, so I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width, and I added three strips of this to the back of my stamped piece. Once I pull the release paper on that, I just centered this on the card front, and here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired by Mary Ellen today. Now don't forget to go visit her video. Again, it's linked at the top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. 
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.